I have no shelves up here. Well, good morning. I mean, good. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know about you, but all day has felt like I've been, I'm living in Seattle. We were like driving uh, up to 163 towards Little Italy in downtown. And, you know, Emily, my daughter is here, Emily. She's my best middle child, my only middle child. Um, so we've been having a blast and going around, but she's like, you know, Dad, this, this really seems like Seattle. Because it's like, you know, it's all green and, you know, the mistiness of everything. And so, yeah, it's been a good time. She leaves on Friday morning. And, uh, yeah, it's gone by pretty fast. She's much cheaper to feed than my other two kids. Yeah, like, do you want do you want to get some ice cream? No, I'm okay. Are you sick? Yeah. Well, let us come tonight and walk in the light of the Lord, and He will teach us His ways, and we will walk in His paths. Show your servant your works, O Lord. Let your merciful kindness be upon us. Not to us, O Lord, not to us. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, be with you. Father, as we come to this Lenten service, thank you for the nice meal that everyone was involved in. Thank you for Ruth organizing it. So much needed. Harvest is great, Father. And the workers are few. And thank you for those that you call to help and do and work amongst us here in the harvest at Hope Lutheran. All this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we are created to experience joy and communion with God, to love one another and live in harmony with creation. But our sinful rebellion separates us from God our neighbors, and creation, so that we do not enjoy the life our Creator intended. As disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ, we are called to struggle against everything that leads us away from the love of God and neighbor. Repentance, fasting, prayer, and works of love, the discipline of Lent, help us to wage our spiritual warfare. Let us therefore turn to the Word of God, this night. For the word of God contains the law and the gospel and is the light before our eyes. The gospel is the gracious promises to us as children. It shows us all that he has done for us in Israel and Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins and for the newness of life. So I like to just emphasize things here. What does the gospel do? It shows our Savior, SOS. And the law, all that can do is show our sins. So remember that. So Christ makes us his own and heirs of the kingdom. The law, on the other hand, represents God, what God expects of us in response of our lives as we live in loving service to his will. The statues the Lord are just, rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear, and give light to our eyes. God spoke these words and said, I am the Lord your God, you shall have no other God before me. You shall not take the Lord's, the name of the Lord your God in vain. Here's the one that we are focusing on again tonight. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Honor your father and mother. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this 
You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet. Jesus summarized the Decalogue into two great commandments. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and your mind. This is the, this is the great and first commandment. And the second's like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. The statues of the Lord are just. Rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to our eyes. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, through the water and the spirit, you've made us your own. You forgave us all all our sins and brought us to a newness of life. Continue to strengthen us with the Holy Spirit and daily increase in us the gifts of grace. The spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of the knowledge and fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. A big thing in those days, and they always repeated that any time they saw somebody doing any kind of works was, Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Or work on every other day, but don't work on the Sabbath. Keep the Sabbath holy. So I'm going to read you the same lesson last week. But try to look at it and hear it as a Sabbath being a law, being made into a law. At that time, Jesus went through the grain fields on the Sabbath. His disciples were hungry and began to pick some of the heads of grain and eat them. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to him, Look, your disciples are doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath. He answered, Haven't you read what David did when his, he and his companions were hungry? He entered the house of God, and he and his companions ate the consecrated bread, which was not lawful for them to do, but only for the priests. Or haven't you read that the law, the law that on the Sabbath the priest in the temple desecrate the day and yet are innocent? I tell you, that one greater than the temple is here. If you had known what these words mean, I desire mercy, not sacrifice, you would have not condemned the innocent. For the Son of Man, meaning the Messiah, is the Lord of the Sabbath. Going on from this place, he went into the synagogue, and a man with a shriveled hand was there. Looking for a reason to accuse Jesus, they asked him, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? Look at where their hearts are. They don't care about that man that needs to be healed. They just want to catch Jesus in the middle of doing works on the Sabbath. Jesus said to them, If any of you has a sheep and it falls into a pit on the Sabbath, will you not take hold of it and lift it out? How much more valuable is a man than a sheep? Therefore, it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath. And then he said to the man, stretch out your hand. And so he stretched it out, and it was completely restored, just as sound as the other. But the Pharisees went out and plotted 
how they might kill Jesus. They loved the law more than the grace and mercy of God. I'm about ready to walk off here. Into your hands, O Lord, I command my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, God of truth. Glory to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Jesus, well, this is a song you guys get to sing, right? I was going to start. I got all excited. I know. I was watching as they're coming up. I was watching The Chosen the other night. And I said to my wife, I was going, keep watching. Every time she's looking and seeing Jesus, it sounds like uh, she's using Jesus' name the other way. So. Out and call on Jesus. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you gave your only Son to be a life, a life to redeem us, an example to follow, a word for our rule, the grace for our guide, the Lamb on the cross for the sins of our souls. Send your Spirit to enter into us and take possession of our hearts and dwell with us forever through Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Moses went to the mountain, and God spoke unto him. Moses, this is the Lord thy God commanding you to obey my law. Do you hear me? Yes, I hear you, I hear you. A deaf man could hear you. What? Nothing, I uh, forget it. Oh, Lord, why have you chosen me? What would you have me do for you? I shall give you my laws, and you shall take them unto the people. Yes, Lord! Lord, I shall give these laws unto thy people. Hear me! Oh, hear me! All pay heed! The Lord, the Lord Jehovah! has given unto you these fifteen... Oi. Ten! Ten commandments for all to obey. Maybe Mel Brooks uh, gave us a bit of a clue, though, as to what also happened when Moses came down from mountain, the mountain and, and saw what his people had become. Uh, built an idol and... Um, were acting uh, rather sinful. So Moses stood there and threw the commandments down and smashed the two tablets. And they remained smashed for the 40 years they wandered in the desert. And then later on, he recarved them, and they then resided in the Ark of the Covenant. Well, a few weeks ago, Pastor Dan asked me if I would like to speak on the third commandment. Well, I was honored, blessed, humbled. I said, sure, love to. And, um, but I also realized I didn't know really that much about anything specific that I could get up here and talk about. So I needed to do some research. So I did. I have a computer program, and it has 10 or 12 different Bible translations in it. And I looked up several of them, even asked Pastor Dan which, which version the church uses and which one he likes. I looked up those two also. And I found that um, you can find the Ten Commandments in Exodus, chapter 20. You can also find the Ten Commandments in Deuteronomy, chapter 5. And they're virtually the same, a couple of words here and there, but they say pretty much the same thing. However, they aren't quite the same as the Decalogue that we read a few minutes ago. What I mean is the first one is the same. I am the Lord your God, and you shall have no other gods before me. But in the Old Testament, the second commandment is, you shall not make any graven images. And then the third commandment is you shall not take, the, take God's name in vain. And then commandment number four is remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. Well, that's confusing. So in my research, I also found that after Christ, the Roman Catholic Church came into being, and, and they, of course, revered Mary and a number of other saints. And at times, prayers were made to them. And this was contrary to the second commandment in the Bible. And according to several theologians that I also read and studied this past week or so, the Catholic Church just um, ignored that line and moved everything up. Now, Martin Luther, being a former Catholic, he went along with that change. He thought it was a perfectly good idea. But now the Catholic commandments only had nine. And so the Tenth Commandment about coveting was divided. Commandment nine became, thou shalt not covet your neighbor's wife. And the Tenth Commandment spoke about not coveting anything else of your neighbor's. Hmm. So does any of this really matter? I don't think so. God gave us these rules, guidelines, if you will, to help us through our sinful lives. 
After we were cast from the garden, we certainly needed a road map for life. Now let's get back to remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. It doesn't matter whether it's the third commandment or the fourth commandment. Now the Jews, ancient Jews in particular, well, they observe Shabbat. And we've anglicized that word and we call it Sabbath. And they observe it on Saturday, the seventh day of the week. Recognizing, of course, that God created heaven and earth in six days and he rested on the seventh day, Saturday. And they are very serious about resting. For Jews, Shabbat actually begins at sundown on Friday, which is often referred to as preparation day. Now, many physical tasks are not allowed on Shabbat, so they need to be accomplished on Friday. Like if you're going to have a big meal on the Sabbath, you need to cook it on Friday. On preparation day. So on Shabbat, extra sleeping was encouraged. I didn't realize that, but you can sleep in on Saturday. However, there were and there are many tasks that were forbidden. Some of those tasks on Shabbat are you're not allowed to do physical labor for gain. That was forbidden. Cooking wasn't allowed. You couldn't go hunting or fishing. Or for heaven's sake, you couldn't even go shopping. Now, there are some current obscure prohibitions even today. I really read these in, in, in the research I was doing. Tying one's shoes with a double knot. Tying the ends of a garbage bag together with a double knot. Tying a plastic bag around itself into a knot. Oh, well. Now, Jesus ran afoul of some of these rules. Many times he would be speaking at large gatherings, most often on Sabbath, because those usually were the largest of gatherings. And it was at some of these times that people with special needs would be presented to him. And we've heard about those. We've, we've read about them. And, of course, this is when some of his miracles occurred. During this time, of course, the Sanhedrin and other high priests became aware of Jesus. And they began to plot how to get rid of him. Well, this brings us to Christianity and Sunday as Sabbath. Well, Jesus rose again on the first day of the week. On Sunday, the Lord's Day. As a commemoration of that, Christians have gathered together on that day since the days of the apostles. Jesus said, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Ultimately, Christ is our Sabbath rest. We enter into him by faith. And the earliest believers began gathering together on Sunday because they recognized that they had entered into Christ, the Sabbath rest. And so we gather together on Sunday, worshiping with people of God, like Christians have done for 2,000 years. And we, too, rest in Christ. The Old Testament is law, with rules for what you did and didn't do. The New Testament is about grace. We get to make our own decisions, good or bad, using the Ten Commandments as a guide, knowing that because of Christ and grace alone, we are saved. 2,000 years ago, when Jesus was crucified on the Jews' preparation day, which we call Good Friday. We embarked on a Sabbath journey which began on the third day when Jesus arose from the dead. Amen. Chuck, I can't wait to tell my wife that I'm not taking the garbage out on Sunday.
I don't know how well it's going to be received, but I'll, I'll say God said so. You shall go, are you listening to that Chuck guy again? Let us pray. Lord, we thank you that you have taught us what you would have us believe and do. Help us by your Holy Spirit for the sake of Jesus Christ to keep your word in pure hearts, that we may be strengthened in faith, perfected in holiness, and comforted in life and death. uh, Let us bless the Lord. The Almighty and Merciful Lord, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you and preserve you. Go in peace and serve the Lord. I think I heard some Lutherans out there. You guys have a good night and blessings upon you.